I learned about a really interesting new constant today known as the prime constant. So what is the prime constant? Well, it's the sum over all prime numbers of one over two to the p. And it's generally denoted by this symbol rho. And so this infinite sum kind of clearly converges by the comparison test. Notice that each term here is less than or equal to each term here where we're summing over all the natural numbers. Here the first term is one over two. Here the first term is one over four because the first prime is two. The second term is gonna be one over four whereas the second term here will be one over eight because the second prime is three. And so that goes on and on. So I won't do this here, but like use your favorite method to find an approximate value for this sum and post it in the comments. See who like maybe has the longest approximate value. I think that'd be a nice uh, experiment. Okay, another interesting way to look at this is via its binary expansion. And since we've got our two in the denominator, that means in the binary expansion, everything is gonna be happening to the right of the decimal point, but it's not really a decimal. Is this called a binary point in this case? I'm not really sure. And what this gives us is a one at every prime location. So we know that one is not prime, so that means we get a zero right there, two is prime, and three is also prime, so we get a one, one there. Those are the only primes that are separated by one. Four is not prime, so we get a zero. Five is prime, six is not, seven is, and then we have eight, nine, 10, 11. So notice we've got ones at all of the prime locations and then zeros at all of the composite locations. So the main purpose of this video will be to prove that rho is irrational. And I think this kind of has a pretty nice proof. Okay, so let's get into it. So by way of contradiction, let's suppose that it is rational. And I think this is an interesting thing that happens with almost all irrationality proofs is that they're done by way of contradiction. Okay, then also suppose that its binary expansion is given by the following like digits. So I'll write it like this. We have rho equals zero point a1, a2, a3, a4, a5, and then so on and so forth. So of course we have enough numbers up here to write all of those down, but that being said, we just need some notation for maybe an arbitrary point after the decimal or binary point. Okay, so anyway, now we're gonna use a well-known fact that any sort of binary expansion or decimal expansion or really any sort of base expansion of a rational number will be eventually periodic. So let's maybe summarize that here. The sequence a1, a2, a3, dot, dot, dot is eventually periodic. So like I said, how do we know that? Well, we know that because we have assumed that this is rational. Okay, so what does that tell us? So that tells us that there exists some capital N, which is a natural number. We think about this capital N as being as large as we need it to be to get to this eventual periodic point. And we have a K, which is also a natural number. That'll be like the length of the period, such that A sub N is equal to A sub N plus K, which is equal to A sub N plus 2K, which is equal to A sub N plus 3K, and so on and so forth. So that's A sub N plus MK for all k bigger than or equal to zero. So that's this periodicity, right? So we've got a period of k here. So we've got a sub n, a sub n plus k, like I said before. And this is gonna occur for all n bigger than or equal to this capital N. Okay, so we haven't used anything about the fact that we're summing over prime numbers, but we're about to do that. And we're gonna use a, another well-known fact that there are infinitely many primes. 
So since there are infinitely many primes, we can take some prime P that is bigger than N. Actually, I guess we could take it to be bigger than or equal to N by our setup here. And then by this periodicity, that tells us that A sub P is the same thing as A sub P plus K, which is the same thing as A sub P plus 2K, which is the same thing as A sub P plus MK. This is going to be for all K bigger than or equal to zero. So we get that periodicity after this point capital N. Again, because we have infinitely many primes, we can always have find a prime that's bigger than that capital N. And now we're going to use the fact that we know that a sub p is equal to 1. And that's because p is a prime number. Next, let's set k equal to p in this sort of index right here. And that tells us that 1 is also equal to a sub p plus p times k. But we can factor that index to give us a sub k times p plus 1. But there's our problem. Because k times p plus 1 is composite, but we know we get a 0 at every composite part. So here we have this is equal to 0. But let's see what we've just constructed. We've constructed the equation 1 is equal to 0, which is a clear contradiction. What did we contradict? Well, the only assumption that we've made, which is that rho was rational, which means indeed rho must be an irrational number. And that's a good place to stop. Mm -hmm.